We have a very special guest on the show, and I, and I leaked this out on to show social media when I sent out the update of our Fantasy Ruckers Challenge. I said, hint, we got a special guest on today's show. I put a Canadian flag, I put an arrow, and then I said, try scoring machine. Mm -hmm. And I think there's only one guy that we know of that matches up with all those different types of things. New Market, Ontario, born and bred. Maddie's favorite teammate that he's ever been with and the try scoring leader for the Toronto Arrows. Let's bring on Jack Woo! McRogers. Jack, thank you for joining the show, man. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, no, we're, uh, we're glad that you could take some time here to talk a little bit about the MLR and man, we mentioned it, dude, in, in that introduction. You were able well, to find the try line this season. You had a freaking successful year, dude. It seems like you were really mauling, bashing. Vanny was loving you. He had you on his fantasy oh, yeah. team for a little bit there. Dude, you why know, don't you just tell us about how uh, the 2022 season was like for well, you, dude? Jack, you know, you know what? I just wanted to say quickly with that intro, you know, about halfway through that, I could have easily thought that we were going to bring up Andrew Quatrin. Both <laughs> Newmarket natives, both hookers, you know. Both been drive scoring machines, but no, we got we got the one and only old Jack McRogers here on the show. But but yeah, um, I guess the, just sorry to interrupt you, Ryan. But yeah, to follow up, I guess how's the season going? No, hey. No, it's all fairness, man. I will say, Jack, in the fantasy season, before you get into kind of how this 2022 year was for you, it was Matt, despite how uh, he says, you know, you're one of the best teammates he's ever played with and all these things. All he right. was flipping and flopping between all you right. and Andrew Quadrin for that Toronto hooker spot all season long. And he was playing that fine line, that game between you and him. And then he ended up dropping you. And Vandy was not going to let he you kind of sleep. Like this, right <laughs> Scooped him up, baby. <laughs> Scooped you right up. And you were, you were a hot, hot commodity for uh, Vandy picking you up late in the season, especially with his push late in the year. But man, 2022 year, it was, uh, it was a fun one for you, it seems. Yeah, I was just on the back of the mall. I was just a lucky guy there. Uh, I guess for the fantasy points, it doesn't really matter how they come, though, eh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I saw that one uh, that one week, Matt, you dropped me. And I was like, all right. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. That out. Yeah, that's right. Come on. You know what? You know how many times I every week I was messaging Vandy saying, hey, I'll get I'll, I'll give you this guy for for Mick Rogers back. I'll give you this guy for Jack back. Can I have my boy back, please? Pretty please. He, and he just he wouldn't. He can't he even tell you up. what I was saying back to him. We're not even gonna say it on air. He wouldn't yeah, give nice. it. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was a fun. Getting, yeah, it was a fun little competition between uh, between Matty and Vandy. You were, you were a hot commodity between the two, man. They were trying to court you. They were trying to get you on their squad. But, uh, yeah, it ended up just Vandy getting the best of it. But why don't you talk on – not so much from a fantasy perspective, Jack, but from just, I guess, a rugby perspective. You know, the Toronto Arrows seemed like you guys – it was obviously a tough stretch heading into the season for you guys, having been playing away from home with the whole COVID-19 pandemic stuff going on. And then, obviously, you finally get that first match a few weeks into the season back in Toronto. You guys – seem to be rolling at home and anyone who was coming through uh york university stadium was absolutely not having a good time traveling there because it seemed like you were just so dominant when you're on home soil why don't you just talk about kind of you know being back at home finally being able to play in front of a home crowd and you know how much that uh contributed to the success that the arrows saw in the 2022 season yeah uh this year after like living away in atlanta for that that full season like this year was kind of about like just getting back to it and like really breath of fresh air. Like, man, like we love doing this. And then that first game at home, all the boys were so excited not to have to get on a plane or like to have your family out and like have your home crowd. It, it was like, honestly, it was like Christmas morning in front of your own people and having like a crowd there. It, it was like honestly indescribable. Uh, and then we picked up uh, a bit of a season of highs, highs and lows. Yeah, we went on a bit of a roll at home. Uh, and then we dropped a, uh, I think a tough one to New York, finished eight and eight, uh, which is a bit frustrating. I think we were a bit better than we showed. Um, but yeah, certainly just from like a team perspective, like got on with all the boys so well this year and like just such good chemistry. And I think we are building for next year. Uh, so yeah. You guys looked like a completely different team at home. It was crazy. I can't even, can't even imagine what it was like probably playing in front of, you know, family, playing in front of your dad, your mom. Your sister, stuff like that, uh, must have been awesome. But 
I feel like that extra adrenaline kick too just does so much. Like I've never gotten to play in front of a crowd like that, but man, I can only assume like that's it'd be incredible. And and your stadium seems like it's a pretty solid venue too, man. Like I haven't been there, I haven't seen one of your guys' matches there, but it seems like on top of you guys just being at home too, it seems like York U seems to be kind of a right fit for you guys as well. Yeah, York York is great. Big old like grandstand. The field yeah. is nice and wide. We're just playing side to side. Uh, yeah, you can it's really take advantage of that uh, that hooker speed, right, Jack? And, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah uh, like lineman <laughs> jog uh, yeah good beer garden in the end zones too york is hey. great yeah i mean it's it's great to great to know that you guys finally found a home and, and hopefully you guys are there for a while so so it's all yeah, that's always yeah, nice to see now shifting over here jack so we talked about the campaign and we're trying to kind of you know look ahead here guys so you're looking ahead to i guess now the 2023 season um you guys are so close you mentioned i mean you guys don't feel like necessarily that eight and eight record is indicative of kind of how you guys perform throughout the 2022 campaign but looking ahead to 2023 is there anything from a strategic standpoint or anything that you guys feel like you need to kind of shape up heading into next season i know you guys relied heavily obviously on that set piece you guys having a lot of success there you you being one of the big uh, big benefactors of that, scoring six tries this year and leading the Toronto Arrows with that. I will say, I feel like you could have snuck in a few more, Jack. In that last match, I feel like they were doing Paul Cellini a little bit of a favor on those set-piece plays in his 50th cap, and they were kind of setting that up. I don't know if that was part of the game plan. You can correct me if I was wrong, because I feel like you kind of <laughs> scooped there on the back there, and you might have been able, if he passed you back, you might have been able to add to your try total there, but I think you guys were all doing a Cellini a favor. But nonetheless, though, is that kind of a focus that you guys are emphasizing you know for years to come i know a lot of our fantasy uh fantasy rugby uh players will want to or will be listening and interested in how much of an emphasis that's going to continue to be as part of the toronto arrows or is there something that you guys are looking to change up in seasons to come that, that's so funny you notice like the uh the ball getting two tries there because that play that, that play is designed to go to me a meter yeah. from the line and like technically it's my job to rip the ball there and i was right. yelling at paul like keep it keep it keep it <laughs> Jack, you're, too, you're too selfless man you gotta take those you gotta you know you gotta take those for yourself. yeah you know what i could have used the points vandy, too vandy over here was struggling because yeah i could use the points put them in you guys didn't yeah. take Cellini on his 50th? He hey, had two you gotta, tries. You gotta let us know next time when you guys are doing <laughs> setting up plays for him to score a double. So, you know, maybe maybe give hey. the boys a little bit of a hint that you guys are running those for him. Yeah, but no, that, that was... not like insider <laughs> trading or something? <laughs> hey, yeah, I'll say... We won't call dude. that. Honestly, in our league, we've had guys reach out to other players in the league. Like one of our league members, Steven, he's, uh, he was trying to figure out whether or not to put Connor Mooneyham in his lineup. So he literally shot Mooneyham a, a message on Instagram. He was like, hey, man, are you starting this weekend? And he shot him a message back. He's like, yeah, I am. Uh, you, you can play me in the lineup. And he's like, all right, sweet. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. we, we, always, we, we always joke about it because imagine, I don't know, Jack, how much you play like fantasy football or any other fantasy sports. But imagine, you know, texting up, you know, uh, <laughs> like a quarterback in the NFL and be like, hey, man, you, uh, you get to go this weekend i just want to make sure so i can set my fantasy lineup it's kind of like the same deal but i guess that's just the lucky uh the lucky yes. connections that we have here in the mlr jack yeah, i messaged awesome. i messaged mike and he gave me the cold shoulder he straight up just <laughs> oh, yeah. said he straight up said yeah you'll find out in the lineup announcement won't you i said well well all right then all right there mike yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's what, for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. what we've learned though from what Cheers, we've learned Mike. from all of the guests that we've had on our show jack is that when we reach out to these guys and try to get an inside scoop sometimes they're a little bit more uh more precious with the uh the close uh stats and a little bit hold that a little bit close to heart but nonetheless it's been a, a fun year but speaking of fantasy rugby though uh, jack we want to get your opinion on it because that's kind of the main question that we ask a lot of the players that come through this podcast because it's a rare opportunity kind of like how we mentioned here how to have someone like you come on our show to actually talk about fantasy rugby is pretty interesting to us so as a player and whether or not you do play fantasy sports outside of rugby what's kind of your thought about people kind of relying on your stats now not really just following you along just because they're a toronto arrows fan but because let's say someone like vandy has stake in you and it's like damn i need jack mcrogers to score me a try this weekend what is that kind of feeling as a player knowing that that's something that could be a possibility like other sports yeah I uh, I played probably my first like fantasy league last year like the Six Nations fantasy. Okay. And it was like a ton of fun and like I totally bought into like not even cheering for teams but like so invested in it. So I am all for it, especially in like MLR where you guys have that connections and like sometimes it's like uh, a friend playing or it's just a random guy and like you got to make that decision and like get to know more players around the league. 
uh, I'm all for it. Uh, if I wasn't playing, I'd probably set up a profile. And honestly, my mom would probably like playing fantasy rugby. Hey, there, <laughs> hey, we, there go. we go. Hey, it's for anyone to join in. We're still trying to grow this thing. So, you know, whether you're a Very mom watching your son play on the Toronto Arrows or if you're just a guy that wants to go out on a Sunday, grab some beers and, and watch fantasy uh, rugby or watch the MLR in a different way. That's kind of how you can kind of digest this whole fantasy rugby thing. But yeah, it, I think it's cool, man. I think w what we're thinking here is that I think a lot of people are finding that, you know, there's other ways to kind of enjoy rugby and enjoy the MLR and the amount of ways and opportunities. I mean, I don't know how much you've watched the rugby network broadcast but them starting to integrate you know these little trivia sports betting you know just different ways to get people involved and engaged and stuff like that so i think fantasy rugby can add that sort of element especially with the mlr as it continues to try to grow here on out a couple more things here jack before you head out here we want to ask you a few more questions and one thing that we want to uh to ask you here as well uh we needed to fit this in here it's not an mlr question it isn't a fantasy rugby question but we've been trying to get you on this show for so long but we usually record this podcast on tuesdays right and the thing is is that you're tied up with something on tuesdays and that's uh that's coaching a particular team that matt and i have had uh some experience with in the past and you've taken on the reins here of coaching the aurora barbarians and i want to ask you man how's the marshall premiership doing i haven't i haven't checked on that league in quite a while matt and i both uh both markham irish boys at heart so seeing that you're uh, competing with the the uh the aurora barbarians cool to hear that you're coaching and, and giving back to the community yeah i've uh, i've been really enjoying my coaching it's been challenging it's been good uh i feel like i owe the barbs a lot though i've played there since like i was a u12 Unfortunately. Like, it, it feels good to like go out get some knowledge and bring it back and really help those boys uh <laughs> otherwise the league the league's been really competitive uh we had a tough loss to scottish and balmy beach but like the league's been really competitive i've been impressed with quality of play <laughs> and like our twos team this year is pretty much awesome. Like that bodes really well uh, for the future. And it's kind of like a bit of a slow build after COVID, uh, but like more and more guys are coming out and more and more guys are getting back into the game. Yeah, it, it's been awesome. It's been good fun. Uh, it's been pretty challenging for myself. Any arrows, boys, you lure back to the Barbarians to play for them or anything like that? Or are you going to become a player coach at some point this season or what? Uh, all those questions are kind of up in the air. We'll probably figure that out. The next couple of uh, weeks, uh, I know Quatrain. Oh, 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 oh what are you play, and Quatrain going to do when you're both when you're both at the same position? I guess you'll have to play nine, eh? <laughs> I don't think I don't think that would be fair. I would I would not be wanting lining up against Jack Rogers in the Marshall. No, I, I would not. And he and, and by the way, he looks smaller on camera than he is in person. He looks way bigger in person. I saw him. I saw him a few weeks ago. Holy. We almost got you boots. You almost were a barb right there. Oh, come on. I can never be a barb. I'm, I'm an Irish for life. Irish boy at heart. I don't know if you can see the jersey up here, but I had to rep it. I had to hang it up here. I had to put the Irish jersey up there because uh, with a little bit of barbs, we can't go too much barb stuff. We got to keep the Irish in there as well because, uh, no, I definitely have uh, have certain feelings towards uh, towards your club there, especially paying, playing them so much in the past um, during the playing oh, yeah. days. But I will hey, say, Jack. though, Jack, I want to ask you, you being both a coach for the barbs and then you also, I guess, having the experiences in the MLR, how much of a connection or how big of a part do you think those kind of amateur leagues that have been in place for such a long time are going to have an effect on professional rugby in North America. I know that the Toronto Arrows have, you know, the the academy system and you guys have that kind of youth uh, development system that you guys put together to, in order to kind of fast track certain talent and certain rugby talent through the Arrows program and into your uh, professional squad. But I guess, you know, clubs like the Aurora Barbarians, clubs like the Markham Irish, who, you know, don't necessarily have that affiliation, but obviously there are good players that play in these leagues um, that have the potential maybe to have, you know, a shot. I mean, you're seeing guys in the league. Uh, you've played for the Barbs. Johnny Sheridan has played for the Irish. You see guys that have, you know, these martial ties. How big do you think that amateur style club rugby is going to play a part in the development and growth? growth of MLR as a whole, not even just the Toronto Arrows. Yeah, it's it's huge. Like you you named a couple there, but like a couple of Bombay Beach boys and like yep. more. Uh so I also think like with uh the league getting better and better, like the overall quality of play, uh you're gonna have to find club rugby players because you can only field so many internationals. So it's gonna right. play such a huge role 
And like I was, I was even talking and like going to help out with the back line. And like for those players to see a guy like a Sherry come out, like it's also something to like work towards. And like club rugby isn't just like a means to an ends anymore. I think it's awesome that there's like another shot. And like even uh, I know like he goes out and like he's not just there for a beer and to watch the game. He's like looking for guys that could get into the academy, could make it on the arrows, and like. He's looking like who is the potential size and like skill we can develop or like vice versa, who is the right skills and just is missing a few like tools can be huge, especially with like the cap on how many international players they are going to like rely on club rugby and local guys. And like, I think scouting is going to be even a little more important. So I think it's awesome. Club rugby hey, Randy, is just time, like part of the pathway. Randy, time to get involved in a club, buddy. Yeah, yeah dude. So, <laughs> so uh, Jack, uh, Vandy chose. We had the people choose what team this guy would uh, be his favorite team, and and the people chose at the start of the season that he was gonna like the uh, the Warrior. Utah Warriors. Um, sure. This is also a guy that lives in Tilsonburg, Tilsonburg, Ontario. He should be cheering for the Arrows, but the people, <laughs> the people chose Utah Warriors for him. And we've said there's a running joke on the show. So Vandy loves to watch Mike Teo and all these guys, and we're saying, hey, That's man. Right. You're not far off, dude. We can start getting you trained up and we can have you running at fullback in no time. So him being there, he loves to hear that there can be there's a chance. He just got to sign himself up, get his registration in with Rugby Canada, Mm -hmm. head on over to the local club. And Vandy, in no time, the arrows are going to hear about you and you'll be running fullback right along with Jack. And you'll be the try scoring leader, dude. You know what? That sounds like a great timeline. You know what? Maybe I'll just try it, you know, next season. (laughs) Yeah. Then you should. We'll get you a jersey. I'll drop the name. I'll come out. I'll come come out. There you go. I'll go to Utah at home. I'll have a second favorite team. You can do that. Imagine! Oh my gosh, that'd be uh, that'd be funny. Yeah, I think a uh, live heard, stream. We've actually proven it, Jack. <laughs> hey, that, a live uh, stream, it, boys. We actually we we actually <laughs> proved it that ja- uh, that uh, that Vandy has a uh, a forty dash time, like a, like a yep. four second forty dash time. So that <laughs> wide field that yeah. you're talking about, Jack, at Yorkie Stadium is only going to play in Vandy's favor, man. He's going. <laughs> oh yeah. He's going to keep on oh, working. Yeah. Once um, this barrel yeah, gets moving, it don't stop, man. Test. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. It's all I, it's all about momentum there, man. It's all about momentum. <laughs> exactly. You know what? I don't exactly. even know if it's like if I'm even that fast or if my gut's just pulling me forward. Right. It's just the Golden inertia. Called inertia. Yeah, that's physics to its finest. Rugby physics yeah, to its go. finest. But uh, yeah, Jack, man, really appreciate you hopping on here, talking a little bit about your insight into uh, into the league and also kind of how you've heard about this fantasy rugby thing because yeah. it is uh, it is cool to kind of see that we do have some of the support of the uh, the players around the league. And we see you uh, commenting. I think you saw your name as one of the top performers in one of the weeks and you said, hey, tagging Maddie. And you're like, hell yeah, I'm, I'm contributing hey, that's, that's, that. That's so. the glory days when I had him. Yeah, that, that was the worst. So, uh, no, it, it's it's cool to see that. And we're, we're just hoping to help give people another avenue to digest this whole Major League Rugby thing because it is a blast to watch you guys. I mean, we were following the arrows all season long and to see, you know, how much fun you guys are having out there on the pitch and seeing you guys being able to do it finally professionally now because of Jack. I know how long and Matt knows how long you've been in this game and how long you've been, you know, grinding and yeah. trying to make it up the ladder here. And uh, to finally see that that's kind of paying dues here with the professional league and with that opportunity opportunity and and uh it's really really cool so we hope to and, bring more and, fans hey, to before, see that before you drop off i just want to say thank you jack for for not sticking with with playing nine um you <laughs> allowed me to finally have you know actually get a position and not have to compete with, with you uh so yeah just just wanted to say thank you for for moving from nine to flanker and then from flanker to hooker you got farther and farther away from me and i was just happy that i didn't need to compete with you anymore so you uh you made you made my rugby career possible, and uh, and yeah, Man, and now I'm retired. So that's how it is. No, no thank you. I, I couldn't really play nine. Like, like I can't spin left handed. It's a bit of an issue. So uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. No, don't thank you, don't, don't be humble over there. Don't be humble <laughs> over there. We all know you're you're gonna blow me out of the water. You just decided to give me a break. And that's why Matt told me that you're his favorite teammate, right? <laughs> exactly. There we go. <laughs> well, hey, there we go, uh, Jack. Really appreciate you hopping on the show here, man. Appreciate you uh, giving all the support here towards the Fantasy Rutgers, man. And good luck this offseason. Enjoy it. Take that well-needed time off and, and rest up. And we're, we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing you in the 2023 year, scoring a lot more tries for the Toronto Arrows. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, and I'll keep 
following on the, the Instagram fantasy records. Best oh, of luck yeah. in the playoffs. Appreciate it, dude. Thank Thanks, you, Jack. Jackie. See you, buddy. Hey, cheers, man.